achievement. I don't have a project to pitch. I just have some gossip and uh, classified information. So uh, what I'm going to share with you today is classified information. If you don't see me tweet again, please somebody look out. Like send somebody looking for me. When I was uh, when I was nine, my hair was under control. My brain wasn't. Um, I was obsessed with two things. The first was Sherlock Holmes. Uh, because of uh, his sheer logic, his observations, and his uh, scientific method, and his ability to deduce things from the inconceivable, from the mundane, from the everyday things. My second obsession was popcorn. Um, like most of you, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in love with popcorn. Um, popcorn became popular in the, uh, during the Great Depression uh, because it was a cheap source of food. But uh, from my experience, it's good for any size of depression. Really, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a great one. Um, science explains that popcorn um, uh, contains 13% humidity. That's just science being all science. -y. Really, it's just a drop of water inside the popcorn. And when you get it above 180 degrees, it explodes and then the popcorn takes uh, a beautiful shape. Now that's science, and science is boring, so I prefer another explanation. Three, um, 3,000 BC, that's 5,000 years ago, the Native Americans discovered popcorn and um, they used to believe there was a spirit hiding inside the popcorn and that the spirit um, would, um, would angrily make a sound as it leaves the kernel when it gets hot. Um, I, think, um, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a better explanation than science. Um, uh, popcorn is about spirits communicating with us, and that got me thinking, right? Um, they thought that the spirit was trapped, and I was thinking, all right, so that spirit's talking to us. Um, I think that that's very, uh, that's a cool idea. So I put on my, um, I put on my detective hat, and I went on, on, a, on, a, on a, an investigation. Um, and I'm afraid to tell you that I think there's a big cover-up happening, and I'm here to tell you that someone or something doesn't want us to know the truth, and what I'm about to share is a bit mind blowing Naturally, I started with popcorn. Now, I discovered that the highest recorded jump that a popcorn ever made was three feet. Now, they tell us that three feet is one meter, and that's a lie. Three feet is not one meter, three feet is a yard. Why are they lying to us? So I wanted to know, why are they lying? Why did, why, why did they try and hide about yards? So I went looking into yards, and I remembered, yes, Scotland Yard. Why? Sherlock Holmes, of course. Scotland Yard. So why are they trying to distract us from Scotland Yard? I'll tell you why. Because something was happening when they were inaugurating Scotland Yard. I'm going to tell you about it right now. Scotland Yard was inaugurated in 1928. And I think that they wanted to distract us from this information because in 1928 something else was happening. There were two other people doing something that year. One man in the USA and one man thousands of miles apart in the ocean between them. They were working on something at the same exact time and I'm not sure it's a coincidence. Um, in 1982 in Detroit, Michigan, Mr. William Burt was working on an invention that he called the typographer. That's a stupid name, and later became a much nicer name. We know him today as the typewriter. Mr. William Burt was working on this in 1928. And that's not suspicious just yet. But at the same exact time, thousands of miles away with a motion between them, in Vienna, Austria, Mr. Cyril Demian was working on patenting his own invention which we know as the accordion, although he tried really hard to call it the squeeze box. Um, Lucky for us, it's called the accordion. And so um, I was thinking, all right, now things are starting to come together and things are starting to get suspicious. Because in 1982, two men, separated by an ocean, I remind you, designed and developed essentially the same machine, except one was communicating in letters and the other was communicating in music. Was that a coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. So, um, I figured um, I, should, uh, I, should really research, um, I should really research this. I wanted to know, what is the link between letters and music? Because if I can, if I can crack this mystery, I'm going to find out what's going on with pop popcorn. So I went and I went uh, digging into, into the history of musical notation. Now that's what musical notation looks like today, but that's not what musical notation looked like all the time. Previously, this is the first recorded uh, human um, and this is the first it's a clay tablet from almost 3,000 years ago. This was found in modern-day Iraq. This is the first time humans decided to note down music. And it was noted in cuneiform. You may have seen this form of writing. It's cuneiform. It looks like nails. 
But it didn't always look like nails. It looked like nails in its fifth and sixth generation. And, and it was very interesting because humans were using the same uh, alphabet that they used for letters to write uh, music. So now I was beginning to see the connection. And I traced cuneiform way back when it was looking uh, a bit more different. And I wanted to look at, at its evolution. And then when it first began, 5,000 years ago, um, it looked like popcorn. That, ladies and gentlemen, is popcorn. That is popcorn. That is extremely suspicious. The mystery is still baffling me. I haven't really cracked it just yet, but really, 5,000 years ago, at the same exact moment that the Native Americans discovered popcorn, miles apart, at the same exact time, humans decided, you know what, we need to start writing down what we're saying. And uh, they developed a language that looks like popcorn. That, that is where things are getting blurry for me. Was it a coincidence? Was it a conspiracy? Aliens? I don't, I don't know. It gets, it gets a bit blurry here. Uh, and I don't have any explanations, but I can tell you this, and that's why I came here today. We cannot ignore popcorn any longer. <laughs> you can't take it for granted. And I came here to tell you this. Um, popcorn isn't just a snack. Popcorn is history. Popcorn is mystery. I'm good, right? Great. 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 <laughs> Great. 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 Uh, uh, the history of viewing communication is closely linked to popcorn. Um, so the next time you're enjoying some popcorn while you're watching a movie, please remember that the script and the soundtrack of this movie wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for popcorn. The language and the music were both developed because of popcorn. It's not by coincidence that we eat popcorn when we're watching movies. <laughs> so don't chew and swallow that popcorn absentmindedly. Don't gulp it down by the hand. Have it one by one, letter by letter. <laughs> Try to listen to what the popcorn is trying to tell us, and you just might learn something. Thank you. Woo!